lights. Dude, let's go. Oh my goodness. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Untamed Outdoorsman. And today we are back doing another one of our buyer's reviews. And it's going to be a two-year buyer's review on my Malone Axis truck bed extender. So as you guys know, I've talked about this a little bit on the channel. I haven't talked about it too much, but I have owned this truck bed extender for two years now. Uh, like I said, it is the Malone Axis truck bed extender. There's a lot of these across the internet, but this is the Malone version, so the name brand. Um, I have owned this thing for two years now, and it has exclusively helped me haul and transport my Ascend 133X kayak. Um, and as you can see, it's still holding up very well. So we're going to be going through a full buyer's review. We're going to be going over just some features of it to start, some minor modifications that I've done to it to help improve the overall functionality. Um, then we're going to be going over some pros, some cons, what I like, what I don't like. Um, and then we're going to be going over, you know, do I recommend this to you? Um, so we're going to be going over all of that in today's video. So if you like what you see, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's free, completely free, and it helps out a lot. So I'm wearing socks and sandals. Let's get this started. So right off the bat, I'm going to mention that this thing retails for $150. Um, so $150, you basically get something that is pretty multi-purpose. So while well, yes, the main purpose that people buy these for, especially from Malone, is for you know kayaks, canoes, uh, small John boats, things like that. Um, you put this in the back of your truck with a two-inch receiver, and it usually extends your bed out by two or three feet extra, including the tailgate. So after the tailgate, probably another two feet out. In my opinion, for a 13 foot kayak, that's exactly where it should be, but we're gonna be going into some more reasoning as to why I like this so much. So some people, you can actually use this for, you know, if you're going to a hardware store, if you want to like a Home Depot, Lowe's, and you need to bring lumber with you, this is a great multi-purpose tool. You can use this for around the house as well. It doesn't have to be just for kayaks. I uh, can use this for a variety of different applications. But we're gonna get started on just the general tour. So before we get started, I'm gonna talk about some mods that we did. So for modifications, I have added some pool noodles here. So some of you are probably wondering why are you adding pool noodles here? The pool noodles act as a better cushion uh, for the plastic hull. So plastic and metal, they don't mix. So the plastic tends to get all scuffed up, um, all messed up. So a really, really safe and cheap option to do is pool noodles. So very simply, I took of two approximately one foot long pool noodles here. I cut them up and I placed them right on these bars here for the uh, adjustment. We'll get into that in a minute. And then I added a pool noodle right at the bottom here to cushion the bottom of the kayak. So this prevents any scuffing, any, you know, any friction of metal to plastic on the kayak. Because uh, I started to notice on my hull that it started to get a little messed up right where I was putting the kayak on this bed extender, right down here. Um, you could definitely notice it was starting to get a little messed up. So to prevent any major issues from happening, I spent the five bucks, got a pool noodle. Uh, doesn't matter the color, I just like the red, just because red is like a safety color. Um, and I just took some Gorilla Tape here to help strengthen it down. You could probably do zip ties as well. But very, very cheap option, cheap, simple option to really improve the overall functionality of the bed extender if you have a kayak. So the next modification I've done is extremely small, but I just added some reflective tape down here. So I'll actually change the camera angle right now. I just added some reflective tape down here. Uh, this helps with safety um, when you're driving, especially in nighttime conditions. Uh, this is a really, really nice safety feature to have. Like I, again, it's super cheap, doesn't cost too much. Um, I just added some right here. This helps uh, drivers see your bed extender a little bit easier. Some people may not see this black bed extender at nighttime, it might be difficult. Um, so that just keeps people aware that, hey, I got something in the back of my truck, um, just be aware of it. So that's just a nice cheap safety feature to have, but that's all the mods I've done to it. If, if you even wanna call them mods, just little additions. Um, so we're gonna go over a quick tour here. So obviously you have your main bar here. So right here is what attaches to your receiver. Um, heading down, you just got some pins that hold these together. This can be detached and broken down. So this is a point here to break it down. It's all held together by those pins. Um, something right here to break down. And then obviously you have 
your two poles stick up that help stabilize whatever you have in the bed extender. So the kayak, I would just press these into the kayak so it doesn't move around. Uh, nice safety feature there. And then you have these, like I said, completely adjustable here, uh, also held together by these pins here. And then you have your main T-bar here. So this is what's gonna hold the actual kayak um, to the bed extender here. It's not very long, so you're gonna definitely need to use the extensions on the bars here as well. But this is, like I said, it's what holds it to the kayak. So yeah, very, very simple tour. And then you also have adjustment points right here too, depending on the height of your tailgate. So this can be in line with that. Um, so very, very simple, super simple. And this normally does come with a anti-rattle clamp. Um, we'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit, but I already lost it. So I haven't really needed it, but like I said, we'll get into that in a little bit. So let's just go over some of the pros and cons now. Okay, so now that we went through a very quick tour, we're gonna to be going over some pros and cons. So my first pro that I'm gonna say is obviously the nature of the product. So the extra bed length that you get. Like I said, this is great for multi-purpose applications. So John boats, kayaks, uh, lumber, um, PVC piping, like if you go to hardware stores, just anything that's long like this, uh, makes it super easy to handle that kind of stuff so you're not bending the wood or anything like that. Because when you rest it on top of your tailgate, you run that risk of potentially having issues with the wood. This just keeps the wood on a nice flat level surface. Um, so you don't have any of those issues happening. So a very nice multi-purpose tool to have, but in my experience as a kayak bed extender, uh, this thing has done the job very well. So it allows me to have that extra feet, probably sticks out, the Ascend probably sticks out an extra two feet past the bed extender, but I'm not worried about that. And then I obviously just have a flag in the back of the Ascend that prevents uh, any issue from happening so you can see it easier. Um, so just follow your safety regulations uh, if, if they want a flag in the back of it, put a flag on the back of your kayak. Uh, if they don't, you don't have to, but my recommendation is spend the extra couple bucks, get a flag for your kayak. Um, so yeah, that's just the nature of the product. Just a very, very nice multi-purpose tool here, um, which is going to get into my next point, actually. My next pro is you can use it in two different ways. So the main way that I've used it and the only way that I've really wanted to use it is as a direct bed extender. But if you decided you wanted to rest something on the top of your car, you can actually use it that way too. So you can actually, there's a hole here for your uh, hitch pin. You can actually put this side of the hitch in first so it raises up to fit your roof. So you can run something across the roof with this as a stabilizer to keep everything from falling. So that's a super nice feature. Um, I've never actually done it before. But from what I heard, you know, people do use it in specific applications. Um, I'm never gonna need that, but if I ever, for whatever reason, may need it, it's a nice feature to have as well. So really, really nice multi-purpose tool here. Um, it has actually served me extremely well. I have actually had to use this for like hardware store runs and things like that too. So really, really nice feature here, um, being able to do all of that just, just with this piece. So my next pro is actually gonna be a two-parter. So this pro is how easy it is to set up and the collapsing ability of this. So compared to like having a trailer, so I know a lot of people like go in the trailer method and we're not ruling out potentially going that route in the future. Um, but for a lot of people, this is so much easier to have because it doesn't take up any space in your, in your yard. It doesn't take up any time. You don't have to register it. You don't have to go through any of that process. This is just a very simple trailer hitch extension. There's nothing else to it. You can quickly and easily put your kayak on the back of this thing and that's it. You don't have to worry about it. It's just another part of your truck bed. It's super easy to um, remove too. I would highly recommend a hitch pin lock. I'm a big fan of the bolt lock um, the, from the company Bolt. It actually uses your factory key. I'm a big fan of that and this is perfect for that as well. Always have some kind of lock, just God forbid. Um, although, although they won't be able to steal like the removal pieces, they can't steal all of it. So I guess it's better than nothing. And I like this a lot for that feature because as much as we're considering getting a trailer in the future, um, this is just 10 times easier than a trailer. You know, there's no stressing out about this. There's no worrying about this. You can very easily just put this on the back of your truck and go. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to go through a registration process or have the have a trailer take up an entire portion of your backyard. You know, it can just be super simple for you. And then if you ever need to collapse it, you can do that too. So 
doesn't take up any space in your garage, in your yard, anything like that, which is, I'm going to say is a huge pro to this. Um, just in my opinion, because this thing has been very, very nice to me. Okay, now that we talked about a lot of pros for this bed extender, I'm going to talk about some cons. So this, overall, I am very positive and I'm happy with my purchase as a whole, but there are some cons that I feel I should share. Um, just some snags that I may have run into, some minor things that have happened. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of the price. So $150 for this thing, looking back on it, you know, it's fine. I feel like I got my money's worth, but if I had to do it all over again, um, there are some cheaper options out there because I feel like you're paying for a name with this bed extender a little bit. $150, um, I, I, I can't help but feel like you're paying a little bit more for the name. You know, Malone, it's a very reputable brand, very high-end brand. Um, but I personally know of people who have owned, you know, cheaper bed extenders. I think there's one from, I think, Max Hall. Uh, I saw it on Amazon a while back. That's like 75, 80 bucks. And looking at them both side by side, couldn't even tell a difference. So I think that unfortunately, as good as this is, I think the price is not great for it. Um, but again, that's not really anything that's directly an issue with the bed extender itself, but I do wish that it would be a little bit more fair of a price because $150 I do feel is a little much for this. Um, just being honest with you guys, we're going to keep it real on this channel. Um, that's what I feel about this bed extender. But my next con, um, I am going to say rust. So this thing, I've had it, like I said, for two years, um, and it has started to rust pretty heavily, um, depending on your definition of heavily. But for for a paint and bed extender, I think it is a little odd that it's rusting so fast. Um, pretty much all of the inside of this tubing, of this steel tubing, it's rusted completely. Um, thankfully, it's all surface rust. It's not like anything compromising, but uh, it is starting to rust quite a bit, especially like, you know, where the inside of the receiver here, like right in here, starting to rust quite a bit. It's actually starting to bubble a little bit down here. Um, pretty much inside of all of this square tubing is starting to rust. And then underneath of these extension arms here starting to rust. Um, and then right on the lips of all of the inside of these two inch holes here, all of this is starting to rust quite a bit. Um, at the start of this year, I did hit it with some spray paint, uh, just some Rust-Oleum Rust of Farmer. That should do the trick, um, but I feel like for $150 for a bed extender, I feel like they could have done a little bit better with the paint, um, just because it is starting to rust extremely quickly. Um, and I'm, I was a little bit shocked by that. Um, my recommendation, if you buy this thing brand new, I would highly recommend take some like uh, some Scotch-Brite pads or something to scuff up the paint a little bit and hit it with some kind of undercoating, whether it be like a rubberized undercoating or like a truck bed liner coating. Um, scuff this thing up really well. I, I wouldn't do it when it's rusted already because, I mean, it's not really worth it, but um, take, take maybe an hour, two hours out of your day, scuff this all up and just hit it with some paint, um, some like durable undercoating paint. And I think that would really help this out a lot. I don't know firsthand if it would or if it wouldn't, but I feel like that would help out quite a bit because you know, I, I feel like if I didn't do that, if I didn't hit it with some kind of paint at the start of this year, I feel like it would maybe have three or four years before it's completely unusable. I think that simple addition would help this extender out quite a bit, um, but that's just my recommendation. So, okay, so my next con is going to be the sharp edges on this extender. So I already talked about this a few minutes ago, but I'm gonna talk about it again here. So underneath of this pool noodle here, you might be able to see it. Um, right where this T-bar meets the extension here, um, that's a very sharp edge. And I feel like after a long time of transporting kayaks in and out, especially a big kayak like the Ascend that we have, or like any, any big hull kayak or canoe, um, after a while, it's gonna start to scrape that hull up quite a bit. Um, and I just feel like, although there is a very simple fix to it, I feel like they could have put like some kind of rubber bumper or something on there, um, but that's just my recommendation. Uh, some kind of rubber bumper right here would probably help this out quite a bit from factory, um, just to prevent any of that scuffing or anything like that. But, and then on this side here, you know, I'm gonna remove this. Um, this is also a very sharp edge. So although it's like not sharp hitting the kayak, having a big piece of steel like this slamming against the kayak left and right like crazy, especially on the road hitting bumps if you're ever on a dirt road or something, this is just asking to scuff up your kayak. 
Um, and I know that there's been some problems with that. So my final con is going to be wobble. So before I even start explaining why, I know this comes to, with an anti-rattle clamp. Um, the second year in, I did lose it, but the first year I did try my best to use it. And honestly, it's just a pain to be honest with you. Um, every time you wanted to use it, you had to like, un you had to take a ratchet and like, tighten it up and untighten it. And um, I could have easily done it, but on top of all the other stuff I had to do to load up my kayak for the day, um, it was just kind of a tedious thing. And honestly, it wasn't really worth it to me, but the rattling is kind of the nature of these products, unfortunately. Um, it's not anything against the Malone one. I think it's just a truck bed extender problem. Um, a, be a great way to prevent it is to extend this T-bar higher. Um, so it is a little bit higher than your, than your tailgate. Um, that's a nice way to prevent it. Um, but I didn't really do that too, too much, even though I should probably start, but the wobble is definitely severe, especially if you're going down like dirt roads or, you know, bumpy roads, you're going to see your kayak wobble a little bit. And after a while, it might start to get annoying. Um, if you wanted to go that route of using the, the anti-rattle, uh, clamp, then, you know, more power to you. Um, I just felt like it got tedious after a while putting that on every single time you want to use this thing. Um, but yeah, that's all my pros and cons of this. Nowhere near as in depth as the Ascend 133X buyers review, but now we're going to go into my final overall thoughts. And if I recommend this, if I don't recommend this, um, like I said, I've used this thing for two years now. Um, it has served me very well over the course of those two years. I've used this thing for a variety of different applications. And overall, I'm very pleased. Um, I am very happy with my purchase as a whole, but you know, do I recommend this? Um, this is not a bad product by any means. It's not a bad product whatsoever. Um, the steel is, although it does rust quickly, it is a durable steel. Um, but in my opinion, you know, I wouldn't go with the name brand for this. Um, in my opinion, you can get nearly an identical product for nearly 50% less if you go with, you know, something from Amazon or something online. Um, I would just do your research a little bit and figure out which brand is right for you. You know, if you want to stick with name brand, this is a quality product as a whole. Um, it's a very functional and durable product. Um, but in my opinion, if I had to do it all over again, if I had the opportunity to do this over again, I would probably go with the cheaper option, um, in my personal opinion. Uh, and as a whole, you know, this is a good quality extender, you know, and if I do definitely recommend it, if you are looking to get it from Malone, uh, I do definitely recommend that. But if you're looking for just whichever one gets you through, definitely consider going with the cheaper options. And if you're looking for the best of the best, um, I would go with something like a Boondocks T-Bone extender. Um, this is definitely like a, a good middle ground, but again, my recommendation is the cheaper models. My honest opinion, these truck bed extenders, uh, not just Malone, but all truck bed extenders are a very useful tool to have for all truck owners. Even if you don't use them for, uh, kayaks, just general tools to have for your truck. I think this is a great option to consider. Um, so yeah, guys, that's going to do it for today's mini buyers review. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This one was nowhere near as in-depth as our Ascend or Native Titan 12 buyer's reviews. Um, so just keep that in mind. But we have a lot more of these type of videos planned for the upcoming months. So if you guys like what you see, be sure to subscribe. Uh, it's free and it helps out a lot. And, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.